Uh, and I'm just, <laughs> I love that boy. I've always loved that kid. He, he's had a special place in my heart. I've watched him grow up. Now he's a fine young man. And let's just let's just pray for him today. Uh, the Ailey Akers family, uh, that's Sister Akers that used to pastor the Gravelly Memorial Church. We had her come and preach for us. Uh, it's been several years ago, but she was 83 years old when she came and preached for us. And I mean, she was a fireball. So Sister Aileen, she, she passed away. She was 94, but that's Elmo's mom. Uh, you know, he, he's singing, so let's remember that family. Alicia Davidson, she has been taken off of the transplant list because of, of her stroke and the symptoms that she's had from that. So just pray for Alicia. She meets with the doctors on Friday so that they can schedule her heart surgery. She, she has a hole in her heart that they're going to have to close up. So if you would, pray for Alicia. Uh, pray for a gentleman named Charles Akers. Uh, Charles is in the hospital with, with heart issues and pneumonia. Uh, he's, he's J.D. Owens. Some of you don't know J.D. We remember him, but it's his father-in-law. So pray for Charles Akers. Frankie and Anita Dalton, continue to pray for Frankie and Anita. How are you doing, Christy? That's still hurting pretty bad, but it's scheduled to have the surgery April 4th. Okay. Yeah, he's got that hip surgery coming once his heart, so. And continue to, to pray for Sister Smith, too, that, that's with them, that, that she would be okay as well. I know it's hard on all of them. We want to remember Leslie. Uh, that's Marie's niece that was in a, was in a car wreck. Is that, if I got the right Marie, it must be somebody else in. I've got Marie on here, so I must have put in. It, it wasn't Stella, it's another Marie. So, so you're saying, I don't know my niece was in. There's another Marie, okay? So let's just pray for her. Remember Patty Chandler, that sitting in Parsons over here, that God would touch Patty and she had a fall. Sister Linda McCone, Margaret McCone, Linda Gerald, which is Louise's sister. We want to continue to hold her up in prayer. Lee Gravely, Brother Nelson's dad. Happy birthday, Nelson. Amen. We want to pray for his dad. And Carol Coleman, we want to remember Carol in prayer. Brother Martin's got a birthday day, too. Or got, his, got his daughter, Judy, came up from Carolina to be with him. So good to have you guys here. Happy birthday, Brother Martin. Yeah, Sister Janet Aker, you had a birthday just the other day, so you thought you snuck out and died, but you know, you got a couple of the tubes. That Sister Linda McCone is having a birthday today. Happy birthday, Linda. I know you're in there. you got the speaker turned on, so we certainly appreciate her, too. Praise God. Do you have prayer requests uplifted hand this morning? Yes. Okay. Do you have those you would like to mention? We are on Facebook, but that's okay. If you would like to mention them. Sister Barb. I uh, still remember uh, JT. Uh, he is going to have the procedure done tomorrow. Okay. They found out he doesn't have any blockages. Good. But he has some fluid around his heart and congested heart valves. All right. All right. That's her son in law, JT. So we're just praying. He's been having trouble with AFib, and he had to do the ablation. Uh, we just pray that everything goes good for Ruth him. Mike. Yes, sir. Uh, Ruth wants to thank the church for the prayers. She's doing better. Good. She's getting around fairly good on her walk. She fell two weeks ago. We had been down here for choir practice, and when she got home, she was standing at the counter. Uh, fixing her a sandwich or something, and she turned around to her left, and when she did, she hit the floor. Just that quick, you know. Yeah. And they put her through the ringer up at the hospital and didn't find no broken bones or anything. She was just bruised. And uh, it's uh, pretty sore for her, but she's getting along good and wants to thank the church Tell you what, that sister Ruth is tough. Now, uh, I believe, if I'm not wrong, that you told me you guys had to make her go to the doctor. We did. That's what I thought. She didn't want to go to the doctor, and it was a week later before we.
we ever encountered to go to the doctor. And uh, they didn't find anything, uh, you know. Well, they put her through everything they could think of, I guess. But uh, she was just badly bruised. Yeah. yeah. It's like you said, uh, you make Could've more been. sense than any of the doctors <laughs> 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 could do. It's just well, that hip they kicked out when she yeah. hit the floor, it come back in. Probably yeah. did. She got yeah. a bad bruises on her hip. <coughs> Other than that, well, she's uh, slowly coming back. Good, good. Uh, I know some of you are wondering why I'm here by myself. You know, that's it. She loves her church. Yes, yeah, she does. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. yeah, pray for that sister Ruth. Then you know what she told me when she got home from the doctor. I told you they wouldn't know you. They wouldn't let them know. So, love that lady. Love that lady. She's precious. Someone else that you want to lift up? Yeah, Tina. Pray for a, uh, Bobby Bobbitt, a girl I work with. It's her dad, and he's got COVID and they're in the hospital. Bobby Bobbitt. Bobby. All right, let's pray for him today. Anyone else you want to lift up in prayer? Let's remember the Ukraine. Yeah, the situation in the world, buddy. The Bible told us this was going to happen, but it's hard to watch, isn't it? But, yeah. Yeah, just continue to pray for, yeah. for all of these. That's, uh, that's, that's part of it being fulfilled. It's, it's all happening. All right, let's all stand if we're able to. If you would like to come up and, and get a prayer call to take to somebody, or if you would like to come up and just, just pray here at the altar, if you just want to come to the altar and pray, there, there's always something about these old altars. I don't know. There's just something about them. You, just, you can just come, and I know you can talk to God right exactly where you are. And he'll hear you there. But just just be mindful and be aware of that, that you're always welcome anytime to, to come up here and, and pray or to request prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father and Almighty God, we come to you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We lift your name in this house, in this sanctuary, because you, you told us, Jesus, in your word, that if we would lift you up, you would draw all people unto you. And that's what we do here. We lift you up here this morning. And all these people that we have named off by name, we need a touch from you. Father, you already knew it. That you told us as a church to come together and to pray. So that's what we're that's what we're doing because we believe that we're a family in God. So we lift up every name that was called out here today and ask for a special touch, special healing touch upon those who need physical healing today. A touch upon those who need Father who may need a spiritual touch in one way or another. Whatever it might be, Lord, we know you're able. We give you the praise for the people you have brought through illnesses and those you have healed and those you have already touched. And we thank you for that. And we give you praise for that. So now, Lord, as we continue here in, in our worship service today, we just want you to know it's all about you. It's, it's not about us. It's always been about you. And we thank you and praise you and glorify you for who you are and all that you do. In the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus, we say these things. Amen. And amen. All right, we're going to worship God through our giving. Thank you as you give unto the church and in your faithfulness and all that you do in, in giving to the church. We certainly appreciate that. God bless you as you continue to do that. Now let's worship through our giving today. Brother James Bolash, would you ask the blessing on the offering today? Father God, Jehovah, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday in which you've given us to worship thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank we you, ask Lord. your blessings on this service this morning. We ask your blessing on this offering, the gift and the giver. And it's always let us use it to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and soon coming King. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother James. <laughs>
monthly meeting starting Thursday, March the 3rd, at 4 o'clock. Now, I see a lot of you that haven't been uh, coming, and we want to invite you to come because we have a lot of exciting things that are coming up, and we we'll want to share those with you. Yeah. So, come and be with us on Thursday, March the 3rd. That's our usual monthly meeting, and we'll have one the first Thursday of each month after that. We have a lot of fun and a lot of fellowship, and we look forward to seeing you there on Thursday at 4 o'clock. Okay? Everybody, ladies? <laughs> oh, like yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Praise the Lord. You all sat down too soon. Yeah, we did. <laughs> You're able to stand, stand again. Up. Please. We had some wonderful fellowship this morning, but God wants to hear our voices. Amen. He wants to hear us singing some more. In Psalm 111, it says, praise the Lord. Can you do that? Yeah. Praise, praise the Lord. The, Lord. He, the psalmist says, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, that's us. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness endures forever. Let's repeat that. And His righteousness, righteousness endures forever. forever. Now let's worship Him with those voices. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
these things of mine and does them. I will liken him to a wise man who has built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Hallelujah. Amen. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell. And it was a great fall. So, I mean, these people out here that's not doing what God has asked them to do, for them to go to hell, that is a great fall. And so it was. When Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority. He's not a, a one, he's the one. He's the one that has all authority and power. He doesn't need our advice, he doesn't need our, uh, our opinion because he is the sovereign God. He is Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. But he didn't teach him as the scribes. See, the scribes were worried about what, how, when, you know, when he, they knew he was coming. But they were worried that, well, if he comes, he's going to take our place. And then we're not going to have the, you know, the, the seat at the head of the table. We're not going to be the, the uh, hope, or we're not going to be the, uh, the person of esteem at the party or whatever. They were worried. But see, here's the thing. God, in the form of Jesus, came to us to give us the path to salvation. He, like I said earlier, he hung on that cross for my sins. That way I didn't have to experience eternity in hell. I get, to, I get the reward, even though the reward was won by him. He gives me, and he will give any of you, the reward. All you have to do is obey. And see, here's the things. He tells us, when the, the rains descend and the floods came and the winds blew, and they be on the house. That's what's happening in our lives. The wind blows against us. The rains come. See, that's temptations and trials that, that the world brings to us. Just everyday life, one-on-one, that's what we have to deal with. Yep. And see, with that, and, you know, when beating on the house, that's the devil. He's trying to tear us down. He's, he doesn't want us to build on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. He wants us to build on that sand because, you know what, he doesn't care anything about us. He just cares that he's going to inflict some pain to God the Father because we are created in his image and we have a soul and a spirit. And that's what he's wanting to go to hell. And see, that's what, it's, it's, it's going to be our destruction if we end up there. But see, it, it, he doesn't really care about that. He's just trying to get back at God. He's like, well, why, God, did you create these people, these people that you know that are going to turn against you to believe that you don't exist, and yet you're going to go die for them? See, we need some unshakable stuff here on this earth. We need people. We need you know, and I'm going to step on some toes here. And I started in mine first. So we need a church that is unshakable. Amen. Amen. We need people that have faith to believe that what God says he's going to do, he's going to do. Amen. You see, yeah. as his children, we yeah. best be moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you felt the Holy Spirit here this morning? Yeah. See, yeah. because yeah. that's Amen. what he wants. Yeah, I brought him, I hope you brought him, because that's what I need Amen. every single moment of my life. Amen. Yes, sir. Because that's just how I'm going to get through it. Amen. 
But see, here's the things. When the rains come, you know, eventually we'll get the sunny skies. So everything that we go through here on earth will be temporary. That's right. The only thing that we have that is eternal is our soul, our spirits. Yes. And see, that's the thing. You know, our spirits, we've got to get that and align it into what God wants for our soul. That way he can take us to our final reward, just as he meant to do all along. But you know, we've got a life to live. We've got to, in here, as we live it on earth, there's a purpose for each and every one of us. I, I've said many times, our sole purpose, or well, let me just rephrase that. One of our purposes is to worship and adore him. That's, what, that's why we're made. That's why he said, I want a John Cooper. He didn't need a John Cooper, but he wanted a John Cooper. And see, it, it, it just blows me away sometimes to think that there's so many people that deny his existence. You can't tell me when the sky is blue and the clouds are so white they hurt your eyes. When you go outside, you can't tell me that God doesn't exist because... That's right, Dave. That's right, Dave. Amen. Because it says in this word that even the rocks and nature and all of that will cry out to his glory. Yes. See, that's our job. We shouldn't have to worry about nature doing it. That's what we should be doing. Amen. Amen. Because think that's what the church is. Like Pastor Mike has said before, if, we're, if we look like the world, What's the point of people coming through those doors? We've got to stand out because the definition of being holy, right? And we're Pentecostal holiness yeah. is to be set apart. So if we're going to be set apart, we need to stand out. We need to show people that there is a hope and a truth that can't be denied and won't be denied because he is absolute and unshakable. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The, the thing about this is, I mean, God is so good to us. We don't really, we can't comprehend how good he is to Amen. us. Amen. That's right. You know, I, I've said time before in their songs that I love being in the spirit. You know, I, you know, like Pastor Mike has said, you know, I'm a crier. You know, sometimes I, I feel his spirit running up and down my spine, in my heart, in my soul, so much that my head hurts. Because they, this body wasn't meant to be in the presence of God. Because it's going to go away one day. And one day, he's going to give us a glorified body that we can stand in his presence. However, knowing me, I won't stand in his presence. I'll be at his feet because of the things that I know he has done for me. Amen. Yeah. And being, you know, I, I had to apologize to Foster last week. You know, I didn't mean anything about saying, you know, how, uh, you know, his age and that. But I just wanted him to know that, you know, I look up to him and I look up to all of you that have been Christians longer than I've been alive. I praise you for that because you guys have, you show me what true faith is. You're my example sometimes. And see, that's the thing. It's because I know your example is Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. And that's what I want. And see, yes. and I, I said, just this week, I was talking to a lady at work. She asked me, she's like, can you pray for my husband? Yes. Come on in here. We had another lady join us because what I believe to know is he has leukemia. But you know what? You know, we, we hear those words and we cringe because we think, oh, that's a death sentence. But you know what? <laughs> Not to God. Yeah. You know, God allows those things in this world because of the sin that entered into the world. Right. 
And, you know, a lot of people I heard, well, why, does, why does God do something about it? Well, I've also heard, you know, God could ask us the same thing. Why don't you do something about it? And see, that's the thing, is in this standing on the rock, and in this uh, scripture, he says, if you're a wise person, you'll do the things that I say. You'll not only listen to it, but you'll do those. And that's what we've got to do. Because if we want to be in a shakable church, and we want people to know that we have the absolute answer and truth to uh, the key to life, being Jesus Christ, we need to start opening our mouths a little more often, Charles. We need to, you know, share and witness and testify. And, you know, we need to, you know, hey, you, it doesn't, you know, there's sometimes I think at work, you know, people's like, okay, here comes John. He's our supervisor. And, you know, and, you know we know that we're going to get some type of mini sermon. But you know what? I can't help it. That's right. I mean, because he says to be a doer. Amen. He says. And see, if he can do that for me, <coughs> Then why can't I look a little strange in other people's eyes? Why can't I? Oh, he's a Jesus freak. Uh, you know, there's a song by DC Talk on Spirit FM, a Jesus freak. Well, if that's what you want to call me, hey, call me. I don't care. Because he, I spoke to another lady at work, and, you know, she was like, well, you know, I'm worried about what people think of, of me when I do things. Well, people are going to judge. And that's the thing, is as his children, we can't judge. He's the judge. And there is going to be a judgment. Yes. I mean, see, that's the thing, is a lot of people, like, you know, they want to pick and choose what parts of this book that they're going to believe. Well, for loving God, the loving God's not going to send anybody to hell. Well, if you deny his existence, I mean, I'm sure it's going to break his heart, but he will send you to hell. Yeah. And that's the thing. Is, uh, that's, I mean, just, just the description that they have given of hell doesn't sound like a place that I don't want anything to do with. Amen. That's true. Psalm 92, verses... Uh, Chrissy, you got that up there? Oh. I put it on here. Okay, all right, I got it. I'm sorry. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, and that should be his children, shall flourish in the courts of God. They shall bear fruit in old age. Okay. See, uh, I, I got to stop right there. Like I said, you know, I don't want to wait until I get older to bear fruit. No. God saw fit that I accepted his salvation when I was 35. I'm 51 now, so that means for 16 years I should have been bearing some fruit. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Amen. To declare that the Lord is upright. Listen, people. He is my rock. Amen. There is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. See, people, if you want to know, if you want him in your life, all you have to do is ask. Just like I said earlier in chapter 7. <laughs> Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And that's what we have to do because, see, that's what he wants. He wants his children Amen. to be blessed. Um, and we're to turn around and bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Praise you, Lord God. Holy Spirit, you're, you're so wonderful. You're better to me than I am to you because, see, Charlie B., I ain't got nothing that I can buy my soul with. I don't have anything worth any type of value to God. Amen. Even the fact that I'm created in His image 
doesn't get me a seat in heaven. Even the fact that I have a spirit within my body doesn't get me into heaven. We have to believe on who Jesus Christ is, Brother Gary. That's who he, that's how he wants it. That's how he did it. We don't have to understand it. We just have to trust and believe. Amen. See, because he knows my tomorrow. He knows my five minutes from now. He knows my five days from now. And, you know, who knows? He may come back before we get out of, out of this Amen. service. Amen. That's true. That's good. Yeah. And see, for us, as his children, that would be a grand thing. But see, there's still people out there. There's still people in our lives. There's still people that we work with. There's still people that we associate with that, well, you know, Charlie, I, you know, I know you're a Christian and all, but, you know, I, 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 you know, and, and you, you, you have a good case for Jesus, but I just don't know. Well, see, here I'm to, here to tell you that maybe it may be one word from you that may flip that switch for them. Mm -hmm. See, because God says when you're to give your testimony, you don't have to worry about what you're going to say. All you have to do is open your mouth and he'll give you the words. That's my unshakable God. Yeah. That's absolute and see, in today where everything, the, you know, if they draw a line, the, it, it's not too long before somebody's coming back and, the, you know, they're trying to erase it, smudge it, do whatever. Because in this world today, they're saying, anything goes. Well, I'm here to say that it's not anything goes. Because if anything goes, you know, way before I was a Christian, I, I tried to live my life. Any, I was married to Christian for a long time. But in, in marriage, there should be a partnership. Right. Well, see, even as a sinner, this marriage was still, well, what can I get out of it? You know, I, I'm not, you know, I tried to consider her feelings and this and that, but what can I get out of it? How's it benefiting me? And see, that's not the thing. Because I do believe that Jesus said the second commandment, or the second greatest commandment, was to love your neighbor as yourself. Is it not? So it's not about all about us. We're, I mean, because we are his children, we need to start thinking about what other people need over our own needs. It's hard to do because we're carnal people. We're instinctual people. But you know what? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, when those rains and when the, uh, when the people start coming at you and say, well, you're not all that. I've seen the way you act sometimes. Well, let me tell you about that. If you ever seen me having a bad moment, I'm not perfect. I just serve the perfect one. So, you know, you're going to have to forgive me just like I'm going to have to forgive you. Because that's what he's wanting us to do is to, to, you know, it's not about you get your salvation and I'll get mine. Well, you know, it's not about that. We're in this together. He didn't mean for us to be alone creatures. Talking about the the history of the church, a lot of people thought, well, I'll just lock myself up in a monastery. But even Martin Luther said, <laughs> even in the, the lowest of dungeons, in, in the darkest of rooms, sin still found him. Right. That's it. Right. And we're not going to be perfect until we take that final breath. Yeah. And he gives us that glorified body. Because, see, that's the thing. Is he is wanting so much more for us. And I, you know, I've said time and time before, I don't want you to think I'm materialistic, but uh, I want everything that God wants for me. Amen. I want every blessing. And sometimes, and in that, when I say that, understand that 
through his Holy Spirit, when he blesses me, and I've got it in my hands, sometimes these, I've got to let that blessing go. I've blessed you so I, you can bless others. I've blessed you so you know what it's like to give. So you can be a cheerful steward of what I've given you and what I've blessed you with. And see, that's the thing. If I'm too, oh, well, you know what, Lord, I, I, I'm so, you know, I get caught up in this world and I, I think if I don't give this or pass this blessing on, I won't get another one. But you know what? I've said it before. You can't outgive God. True. That's right. It's all His. No. Even us. Me, I was bought with a price. I'm not like, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have the power to make the decisions that I do. Because if I want him to live in my life, I've got to surrender myself. I've got to let him not try to, uh, you know, I can't try to be like Jesus. I've got to let him live through me. Because if I'm going to trust in him that when I witness and testify, that when I open my mouth, he's going to give me the words. I just, you know, and I love this saying out here on the, uh, the church wall. Be still and know that I am God. Yeah. Sometimes that's what we got to do. Yes. It's just, <laughs> I, you know, uh, Unfortunately, told uh, Christy sometimes because I drive a lot of the interstate and she likes the service roads. Sometimes I tell her, sit back, shut up, and hold on. <laughs> and, and I think that's sometimes what God is telling us to do sit back, be quiet, let me take care of all of it, and we'll get through this together and I'll get you home. Yeah. Praise God. See, that's the thing is, you know, he is such a loving God, and we need to just, to, to just be his children. Amen. Now, I remember when I was growing up, you know, there were some times when, you know, uh, I had really good parents. Because there were some kids that I dealt with that their parents said, kids are meant to be seen, not heard. But he's telling us, God the Father, Abba Father, just like we sang the song. Come on, people. I need your voice. You know, because he said that he, he would not be mocked. And he said that his word would not return void. Amen. But you being one of his children, sometimes you've got to be his voice. You've got to be his hands, and you've got to be his feet. Right. Not that we deserve it, but you know what? I, 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 I'm trying to change my thinking. You know, because the closer I want to walk with God, the, the worse I see myself as. But you know what? And, and I've said it before. I don't deserve his love, but you know what? It doesn't matter whether I deserve it or not. He gives it to me. Yes. He'll give it to you. Yes. And he wants us to be a part of that. He is the definition of love. And if he's going to be our example, we need to be more loving and less judging. It's just, it's so unbelievable sometimes. You know, I had, I heard uh, John Hagee, you know, I, I heard him say, you know what, God has it all. He has the power, he has the knowledge, he has the wisdom, and through his Holy Spirit, we can have that. Yeah. When we pray for people, well, just don't say, well, Lord, I hope, you know, they, they get healed. And, you know, 
we, we can't be wishy-washy about that. We've got to be in earnest. Somebody says, oh, you know, ask your church if they ever pray for me. Well, did you? You know, I, sometimes I, I feel that, that grip of conviction on my life. Well, you said you would pray, and you prayed the one time, but, you know, just like I said earlier, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And I think sometimes God is like, well, how bad do you want it? Do you really want to see healing? Do you really? And see, I think sometimes, you know, yes, I'd like to see, you know, a, a blazing revival come out of this church. Yeah. Amen. But sometimes I think, well, you know, and, and I'm trying to change my thinking. Isn't that what repentance means? But um, sometimes, uh, you know, well, if blazing revival breaks out in your church, you're going to have to be a part of it. And some people don't want to go that far. Oh, and that's uh, another thing that I think that the God, um, our God is uh, kind of uh, working on. I know that there's nothing to be done in prophecy left for him to come back. That's right. But he's won the pure church when he comes back. And unfortunately, there are some people that are, and I'm not saying anybody in this church because I have dealings with each and every one of you, and I, I see the earnestness in your face, but there's some people that are, that go to church just to be seen. There's some people that's like, well, you know, I gave my tithe. I'm here. I sit on the first row. And which, by the way, I sit on the first row because <laughs> I want, I, it's not to be seen. It's just I want the distraction. You know, I, I hear, uh, you know, uh, people uh, checking their watches and getting out of the mansion or this and that. And, I'm like, I don't want that. I want, I want God, absolute and unshakable. I want him to get to me to the point. And it, it, it probably won't happen until, you know, I, I'm, but I'm learning to build my faith. I want unshakable faith. I want, you know, because just like uh, Peter and John, when they were going through the temple, he said, I don't have silver or gold, but... What I have, I can give to you. And see, if I'm going to say that, if I'm going to tell somebody that, I need to have that unshakable faith. Amen. Amen. And I want that for my church. I want that for you people. And, uh, you know, forgive the term you people because some people don't like that. But, you know, but, but that's what I want. I mean, I want to see us all there, Charles. At the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You know, you may be 20 seats down the table, and you may be 200 seats down the table, but I want to see you. Amen. In fact, you know, knowing the, the, my Jesus the way I do, you, it, it, you know, and I, I know that God says that He's not a respecter of people, but you know what? If you want a closer seat and I have it, guess what? I'll give it to you. Because that's the God we serve. That's what he's teaching me. That's what he wants in my life. I got uh, one, uh, one or two more verses here. And this is why I say all that I say. In 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 17, <coughs> it says, And the world is passing away, yeah. and the lust of it. And he who does the will of God abides forever. Yeah. Yeah. See,
See, like I said, when I before I accepted Christ in my life, it was all about me. You know, and, and, and growing up, I thought, okay, well, I want to be a millionaire, and I want to be famous, and I want people to look at me, and I want the people to respect me. I don't care about any of that now because that's part of the world. Yeah. And that's what the world wants. The devil wants us to step on each other to get to the next higher rung. You know, uh, I spoke to a lady the other day, and you know, I told her, I said, I don't know how good of a pastor I am. I don't know how good of a supervisor I am. But I know this, that it doesn't matter one way or the other. I just want to be a reflection of him. Amen. And see, sometimes, you know, uh, and I'm going to be real, Pastor Mike, Joe B. Any other pastor that's in here? Sometimes he wants us to start comparing ourselves to each other. Well, Charlie B's got 500 down there. Hmm, what do I need to do to get 500? It doesn't matter about, it, it, you know, that Gary and I joke. You know, he, you know I, I tell him sometimes when people know it's the last Sunday, they don't show up. That's okay. Even if there's just one in here, I'm going to give the message that he gave me to give. Because see, just like he said, I will leave the 99 that are safe that's right. to get the one that's not. Yes. And like I said earlier, it doesn't matter how or what we say. Just open our mouths and let God give us the word. Because you don't know if somebody walks through that door. And I, I've seen it when I was down at the, we were doing a, a prayer seminar at the conference at the Tower of Refuge. And we're sitting there and uh, Don Hankler is telling us how to, uh, you know, be uh, better prayer warriors. And in comes this gentleman. And see, the only way that this gentleman could have known is by the Holy Spirit speaking to him. He's like, I need you all to pray. And we're like, okay, you know. He's like, I was just in Roanoke. I had a family member in Roanoke Memorial. I have a family member in the Christiansburg Hospital. And they're telling me both may not make it. And I'm not saying anything that, well, it was because I was there that, you know, prayers are answered. No, it's not that way. It's, all I have to do is pray. It's in his power to answer that prayer. That's right. But I got to be obedient. He puts it on my heart to pray. I better pray. Amen. But that gentleman came in there. I tell you, it's, it's a wonderful experience for me to see that God brought that gentleman into the Like I said, all I did was pray. But to know that he led that person to this church at this moment, at this time, there you go. it's an awesome thing to be a part of. Amen. And that's what we got to do, people. The experiences that I've lived in my life in these last 16 years, just like the song said, I am too near to go back now. Amen. I don't want to go back. I don't want to, to go back to the selfish person that Amen. I was. Because see, now, You know, and people talk about, uh, oh, the good life. I want a taste of it. I've tasted the good life. Yeah. And just to continue on, knowing that Jesus Christ is as close as me just saying his name. He's so close, I don't even have to say his name. 
He hears my heart. What other God do you hear about? <coughs> Allah? Buddha? You know, they even uh, Confucius was, was just a philosopher. They kind of even give him. You know, they say he's divinity. No. Because like Pastor Mike said, they're all somewhere dead in a grave. He rolled the stone away. And he came forth to show that we have a hope and a purpose. And we have a God that is absolute and unshakable. Now, uh, one more verse I want to share with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 13 says, for no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with silver, gold, or gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day, capital D, will declare it. Because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. So he's going to know one day. Well, I mean, he knows, but one of you did, one of uh, each of us on that day will see how the others' work holds up. So are we doing what he tells us to do? Are we sharing? Are we giving? Are we forgiving? Because that's what he wants us to do. He wants to see, you know, he says, the church should be salt and light. Light yeah. to expose the darkness of the devil. And see, here's the thing. I like this next part. Salt. I love salt. I salt just about everything. Christy says one day I'm going to die of a heart attack because of it. But if that's the way God takes me out of this world, <laughs> that's the way he takes me out. But you know what? Salt is meant to create a thirst. <coughs> so that means we're supposed to give people a reason to hope. We're supposed to give people a reason. Hey, why do you go to church every Sunday? Well, not only do I feel good, but it's not about feeling good. It's about having God step on my toes. It's about feeling that spirit of conviction when I know I've slipped and done something wrong that week. And there's something. I mean, the, the, you know, standing right there with my eyes closed, hearing words of song lifted up to God, saying, God, thank you. God, praise you. It was your plan. It was your desire that you come and make a way for us to get back into your into your life. To be reconciled to God. Yeah, I do a lot of crying. But you know what? I believe that word tells me that he collects every single tear drop. Because it's about him. And sometimes I don't feel worthy. You know what? I don't have to feel worthy. I just have to do what he asks. Because like I said, Charles, if he can sell, save me from hell and damnation, and I think part of, even though I know that God is everywhere, I think part of the, the terror of hell for me is 
not to be in his presence. That's right. That's where it is. I mean, we really have it really good that we can say, Jesus saved me. We have it really good that we can say, based on your promises, Lord, I want those in my life. We, better, we have it better than we, we ought to, really. But you know what? God wants it for us anyway. So, how many of you would like that unshakable, <coughs> that unshakable God? Yeah. Amen. So one. There it says, there is no unrighteousness, meaning there is no evil, there is no bad thought towards each and every one of us. Hallelujah. He is so good. He is all the time. And all the time, God is good. For all time, Charles. See, we think that, you know, and we really can't wrap our mind around eternity. Because just like the Amazing Grace, the song says, when we've been there 10,000 years, we have no less days. I wonder if there's going to be a calendar in heaven. <laughs> or when he gets up, when you, when you get up there and he, he you know, takes that, just, he just rips it all up in front of you. You're here. It's where you were meant to be. So, I wonder if you would stand and join me in prayer. There's a lot of things that we have to worry about in this world. But like I said, they're temporary. But you know what? As temporary as they may be, we still have to get through. And we need strength. And we need healing. We need a touch like no other touch to do that. So let's let's go to God right now. Heavenly Father, we come to you. Lord, as your children. And Lord, if there's anybody here that's not your child, Lord, convict that heart. I know when I came to this altar, man, it felt like the, the most strongest hand in this world just grabbed my heart and squeezed. Because I needed that conviction. I needed that. And I thank you and I praise you and I glorify your name, Lord for the good things that you've brought into my life. I thank you for this church. They've taught me a lot. And hopefully, I'm teaching them through the Holy Spirit. Because like I said, Lord, I don't want any credit. It's all you. It's everything that you have done for us. So Lord, as we turn our hearts and our minds to you, thinking about you being that absolute and unshakable God, Lord, we thank you. And we could just pour our, our hearts out to you. And Lord, we know that there's people in, in our everyday lives, whether we see them as we go through the grocery store, or whether they're co-workers. Lord, Put a smile on their face because some people may not be feeling like they need to smile. They may have a world of trouble, rains, wind, and all that blowing in their lives. But Lord, you can put them on that unshakable foundation. You can be their rock, just like your mind. So Lord, I just ask for your blessing upon this church, for those that are will watch by cable, those that are watching on Facebook, Lord, 
in the married. And Lord, if there's any of us that can help provide that need, to be your voice, to be your hands, to be your feet, Lord, show us. Even though we may consider it inconvenient at the time, Lord, you said you'd leave the 99 to go for the one. So we thank you for that, oh God. Because at one point, I was that one. So I know that there's names and people and faces popping into our heads and, and going through our minds right now, Lord. I ask that you comfort those that need comfort. It's a lot of loss and death in this, in this world. There's a lot of need, Lord, especially in you. So as we turn our hearts and our minds, Lord, to you, we know that you live there in our hearts. Speak to us. Involve us. Enliven us. Make us that light. Make us that salt. Because, Lord, there was people that prayed for my salvation at one time. And I thank you for that conviction. And I thank you for the conviction that's not condemnation. Lord, I know we live in this world. Help us not to be judgmental or condemn anyone. Because it's not our job. Lord, as we go throughout the rest of this week, Lord, we ask for your blessing. I ask for your blessing over this, this congregation. And Lord, let me be a blessing to people as you have blessed my life beyond a measure. And Lord, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. And we'll give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' sweet and holy name, all of us say, Amen. Amen. Amen.